This morning's higher level maths paper two was nearly as easy, nearly as straightforward as Friday's paper one was. Although, unlike on Friday, there were a number of places, which I'll go through shortly, where the better student had a chance to show how good they were. Um, section A, there were six questions. Question one was a relatively straightforward question on probability and Bernoulli trials. Um, there was a nice table that students had to fill in that would have led them gently into the question. Question two was the much anticipated question on inferential statistics. Um, it involved the idea of confidence intervals and as it was new material it was well flagged that this would appear in the exam. The two most challenging questions in section A were question three and question four on coordinate geometry. Question three was on the line and what made it difficult was the fact that students had to use the perpendicular distance formula in a manner to work out an unknown coordinate. Question four on the circle was difficult for different reasons. In question four students had to, in part B, decide what approach was best to take. Once a correct decision was made, however, executing the question wasn't that bad. Question five was on trigonometry and it had two parts. The A part was one of the eight standard proofs, right? um, the proof of the tan of A plus B, which students should have learnt in a, off in advance. The B part was a standard solving of trig equations, so most students would have been well prepared for this particular question here. The last question in section A was question six. Question six, as expected, was on geometry. However, the guarantee of question 6A and question 6B with its choice we knew had been removed, so we didn't know quite what to expect in question 6. Nevertheless, it worked out quite benignly. It was just an A part, a standard construction, and a B part, a standard proof. So there were no great tricks there. Section B, the other half of the paper on contexts and applications, okay, contained three interesting questions. One in particular, which would have given students, the better students, a chance to show off their skills. Two of the three questions were on trigonometry. That was question seven and question nine. And both of those um, were reasonably straightforward and, and interesting, let's be honest about it, because they, they did range over a number of different trig skills. But nevertheless, most students would have been able to make serious progress with both of these questions. The one other question, which was on probability, that was question eight, which was worth the most marks, 65 marks out of the 150. It was the most challenging question. And it involved initially probability, but then moving on from there to some paper one topics, such as sequences and series and inequalities from algebra. But overall, a very nice paper. All students should have been able to show some of their skills off, and there was scope there also for the better student to show how good they were.